Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here and another daily fix. So today we've got a USB stick that's come in and it's been bent. Well, it doesn't really look it from here. But apparently when they plug it back into the computer it doesn't really work at all. So um, from what I understand it wasn't a laptop. The laptop was dropped and this was hanging out. So th there's a little bit of a bend there. Hopefully this is going to be a case of the data pins are just broken away. But... Um, I guess we won't know until we open it up, so let's go and have a look, see if we can save this person's data. First thing I'm going to do is work out how to even get into this one. Looks like it's... Let me try to get the seam line on this. Oh well. Let's get the old spudger out and hack at it. Seems like from the back might be the trick. Yep. Well, at least it's not a monolith. Nothing more terrifying than opening these things up, only to find that they're a monolith. Now I just want to... Seems like it still wants to be a little bit tricky. There we go. Well, I can definitely see it's broken there, for sure. This thing's making it harder than it needs to be. I'm just going to clip these little side. Naturally, of course, the clippers are just a little bit too small. Ah. Okay, we are now free. Let's have a look under the microscope. And it does indeed look like a beautifully classic break. All pads have been torn clear. Alright, I might actually be able to fix this one. Uh, okay, so we can see we've got this trace here to connect. And this one here looks like it snakes in behind. It's actually this trace here. We can see we've got the pairing. So that's the data pair. And uh, let's see. You will connect to ground and you're also connected. This is just a flood plane for the positive and this is a flood plane for the ground. So I think what we'll do is we'll this is only holding on by that connector there, that um, mechanical mount there. So we'll desolder that and it'll make it easier for us to do everything else. It's always fortunate we didn't get a board in this sort of condition. Where it's just a simple physical break. So I'm cut that off a little bit. Where the designer has actually been courteous enough to route the traces on the top layer as opposed to running veers directly underneath, which is always a nuisance. Uh, in this case, here all we got to do is just connect a wire to there and a wire to there for our positive and minus. And I think we should be good to go. Let's give our pads something. Just cleaning up the pads to make it easier. 
make sure there's no junk interfering with our ability to finish this job up. So those existing copper pads are being removed. Now put some nice leaded solder on. That's a really shonky joint. Nice and cold. Just a bit of flux will fix that up. There we go. Now we do the next one. I'm just prepping using this junk here. Another nice nasty cold joint. I think I'll just leave it be like that. I probably should be using thicker gauge wire but honestly this is what I've got on hand in a nice convenient spool and it uh, works quite well for uh, doing this sort of work. a little short oh yeah uh, I completely understand people saying I should not be having hair in my connection there but no oh well I completely understand people saying I should be doing this different way maybe doing all on one side then the other and whatever technique that they personally happen to think is best but this is the way I'm choosing to do it and there's nothing inherently wrong here. It is a little cumbersome and the strands of wire could definitely be a bit thicker, I'll grant you that. Because they are being a little bit of a pain in the bust area. Doing it this way ensures I have basically zero risk of crossing the wrong wires in the process. Alright, make sure we've got no short to ground or anything. I doubt we would have, but it doesn't hurt to check. So we're actually going to go opposites. 0.54 seems pretty good. Check our data rails. That's good. Alright. I think we're ready to try our luck. Okay, first thing we're going to do in the terminal window is get a running log of what's going on. And then we're going to connect our extension cable on. I'm just going to lock this in because I don't want it jumping around. And now here goes the Big Bang Theory and plug it in. Looks like we've got, and the good news is we do indeed have now an attached device. Alright, we've got our USB connected, we've got our DD Rescue finally installed and let make sure we've got enough storage here 47 gig, yep we've got enough, ok and what was the thing, the SDB, so Diddy Rescue let's see who it is Diddy Rescue VFP8 device SDB let's save it to the image and we generate a log file here we go, 16 gigs rolling on in. Alright, we can see the data copying across very nicely. Just a couple of minutes left. And then we can move on to the next step.
Now I do have, for people who are going to suggest it, I do have a USB uh, connector on a flex which has the four uh, data, uh, the two data and the power pins on it. But even though it is standardized, and it really is a standard, for the sake of being very pedantic in this situation, I do prefer, if I can, just to use the original connector. I don't think there is any USB connector that has these internally shifted around. But since we're doing data recovery, it's broken clean. I can use the connector. It's easier to map one-to-one -to, -one to where it was using the existing connector. And that eliminates any possibility of a mishap. It's all just simply covering my butt as much as I possibly can. Alright, so we've got our image successful and I happen to have the same type of USB stick. So because of that, I can just de-rescue straight back onto this one. Plug it in. And it's SDB. So sudo did he rescue must be my head. Take the image, put it to SDB and write it to the log. That's probably gonna take about twenty minutes. Uh, that's excruciatingly painful, so we're gonna change up to a different stick. Pull that out. That should cause the system to collapse. Hilarious, it's still going even though it's all completely dead. Uh, it should be a USB 3 type stick. Plug that in. Try that again. Those data write rates are just ridiculously bollocks. If it starts out in the 100, 200 megabyte a second, but it's for a very short period of time, and then it just descends back down to around about 5 to 10 megabyte a second. Yeah, here we go. It's already choked out. So now it's got to flush the buffers and wait. These USB sticks are just a major lie in the great bulk of their performance figures. Even with these modern USB 3 type sticks, while the interface might be able to handle a great deal of speed, the flash memory in there is utterly incapable of it. Most specifically in the writing speed. I'm going to go off and get a coffee. <laughs> Alright, so we've finished transferring that image across, we should be able to actually mount that, but in this particular case, the uh, stick here is actually a 32 gig, but we've only put a 16 gig image on it. So what I'm going to do is expand that image out to the full 32 gig, and the person can then make use of it. So to do that, we do gpart, ah, oh, great, another thing I haven't installed, apt install gparted. Okay, pseudo G parted. Alright, so we have a G parted, you can see the 16 gig image there. We're just going to resize that out to 32 gigs. Apply. Apply. Shouldn't take too long with these things. Well done. Excellent. So now sudo mount sdb1 yes b. And we can see everything is there. We've got 32 gig drive, 11 gig use, 19 free. So it all has been done good and proper. There we have it.
person's data is saved, everybody's going to be happy, I get paid, customer gets data, marvelous situation. So that's it, how to do a simple broken USB connector fix. Um, many ways you can go about it, many ways people want to go about it. It's really up to you, so long as you just sort of make sure you don't have any crossovers. You don't want to get those power lines crossed up, or if you get the data rails mixed up, it's not a big bad problem, you just got to swap them back. But, you know, just find a way that you can go slow and easy, and get it done right the first time. Trapping the USB cable, like having an extension cable like that, and holding it into a sturdy interface while you do this sort of work helps a lot. If you have it flip flapping around on the bench, you'll probably end up doing things like have the cable get snagged and destroy your hard work. Okay, leave it at that. Thank you all for watching. You'll take care. I'll see you next time.